Hello and welcome. My name is Sarah and I'm a master's student in computer science and I'm in the progress of writing my master's thesis about deep learning. In this video I want to talk about my five favorite resources for learning uh, deep learning and they are all first completely free and second suitable for beginners. Now a bit over a year ago I got the offer from my supervisor and professor to write my math thesis in the area of deep learning. Um, I had only given one talk in the seminar about one paper about deep learning, but otherwise had no idea how it worked. I did not know what backpropagation was, or I had never written a single line of PyTorch code. Um, but my background knowledge was, first of all, of course, a strong background in mathematics, because I have a bachelor's degree in that. So I would recommend that you learn um, the basics of linear algebra, so matrix multiplications and um, all of these things. I also recommend that you have a solid foundation of Python coding skills, because both of the big frameworks in deep learning, uh, PyTorch and also TensorFlow, are both Python libraries. So if you don't know how to code Python, it's going to be a bit hard to write deep learning code. So that should be one of your first steps. Like I said, all of these resources are free, uh, so you don't need access to university or a lot of money to learn deep learning. The first resource that I would recommend is actually a series here on YouTube, and that is the Deep Learning for Computer Vision. This YouTube series was the first um, content that I consumed about deep learning because it was actually recommended to me by my professor and supervisor. Each video in this playlist is one full lecture. So this was a lecture held at, like I said, the University of Michigan, and it's like a full university lecture. And it was filmed and recorded and provided for the public, which is quite amazing for anyone who cannot attend university or maybe just wants to learn one or two courses from university and doesn't want to take a whole course. The content of this lecture series is very similar to the Stanford course on deep learning. Um, I think it's called CS231N, and you can also find recordings of that lecture on YouTube, but it was recorded in 2017, and the University of Michigan one is from the fall 2019, so it's a bit more current. The lectures are split quite well into different topics, and they are labeled quite well, so you can just go and pick and choose the topics that interest you. Uh, for example, there's a video on backpropagation and gradients, there's also uh, one or two videos about training your neural network and how you would go about that. Then there is another video about convolutional networks and a specific one about the different convolutional neural network architectures. And in the end, there are some more advanced topics like attention or visualization of what your neural network learned. So if you're interested in these, you can watch them and just skip some of the others. You don't have to watch all of them. Now, I have some disclaimers about this. I think the lectures are super interesting and I love them, but they are university lectures and they are uh, for a quite advanced audience. So if you have no computer science background or no interest in the theory, then maybe I would not recommend these, but you could still give them a try and see what you can learn from them. Another con of this lecture series is that it's deep learning for computer vision specifically. So if you want to go specifically into time series analysis or natural language processing exclusively, then this might not be the ideal course for you, but you could still look into some of the intro uh, lectures about backpropagation, etc., because these are universal concepts across all of deep learning. The second resource that I want to talk about is the deep learning book by Ian Goodfellow, Joshua Bengio and Aaron Corville. And I actually have it right here. It looks like this. But the beautiful thing about this is that you don't actually have to buy this because it is available in an HTML format online completely free. And it was provided like this by the authors. The website for this book is deeplearningbook.org. And I will link it, of course, in the description down below. And on this website, the authors say, the deep learning textbook is a resource intended to help students and practitioners enter the field of machine learning in general and deep learning in particular. The online version of the book is now complete and will remain available online for free. So this is not a scam. They intended for it to be free online and you can read all the chapters and everything. The authors are all very accomplished researchers in the field. 
So the fact that they took the time to write this book and make it accessible for beginners in a way that research papers are often not is uh, really quite amazing. The book is split into three parts and the first part uh, starts with um, mathematical basics like linear algebra and eigen decomposition and goes into like matrix multiplication. So all of these things that I previously talked about in my resource tip one, uh, these are covered here. So if you don't have those background uh, knowledges, you can look into the book for free online and learn a bit about those. In this first part, it also covers probability theory a bit and goes into some machine learning basics like what is supervised and what is unsupervised learning and these sort of things. The second part is then about deep learning basics like how training works and a lot about regularization. So how do you control the training of neural networks? And it also covers some architectures like convolutional neural networks, recurrent neural networks and all of these things. And it has some really great um, diagrams about this sort of stuff as well. The third and last part of the book is then about current research directions and current is a bit weird here because current means 2016 when the book was published but most of these areas as far as I can tell are still active research directions and um, it's very well worth it to read into them. You just should be aware before you like write it down in your thesis or something that there might be more current research out there and you should go and look for that before you take any of what they say here for like state of the art. Now my third resource actually involves coding yourself and for that I would recommend you implement some parts of neural networks and training yourself from scratch. And when we say from scratch we normally mean that you use only default Python libraries and NumPy because that's really great for uh, working with matrices and multiplying vectors and matrices together and all of these things. But other than that, try to not use any libraries and really dig into how things work and how they work together. And yeah, like I said, code it from scratch. Later on, libraries like PyTorch and TensorFlow are, of course, a really great resource and they speed things up immensely. But if you're first starting out, I would really try and get into the details and see how things work under the hood, so to speak. One good example would be to code like a simple, fully connected network with some layers and then implement the forward and also the backward path specifically by yourself. So you can see how backpropagation and the training and optimization works and could also um, try and implement the Atom optimizer, which is a very um, often used optimizer yourself. I realized that this can be extremely overwhelming at first, so I also recommend a YouTube series where a coder did exactly that. He coded some of the neural network functionality from scratch. That is the playlist by the user Sentex, and I will also link that down below in the description box. But I would always recommend to just try it first or stop in the middle of the video and try to work out the next few lines yourself because uh, in all of these things, and I especially learned this in studying math, struggling to get to the solution and actually being stuck and thinking about how you could go, how you could go over this problem is like 80% of the wisdom that you can gain from a problem. You can, will never learn the same things by looking at the solution from someone else as you would by actually solving the problem yourself. Sure, it will take much longer, but you will also learn a lot more. So always try to do it yourself and if you really get stuck and cannot get over the problem then look for YouTube or Stack Overflow or other resources for help. Resource number four are the PyTorch tutorials and documentation on their website. And I know that some documentation can be very frustrating to read especially for newcomers but PyTorch did a very good job at making specifically tutorials that are very readable, especially for like complete beginners. I remember that even in like my first or second week of learning deep learning, I could follow their quick start tutorial and get my first network running and classifying some handwritten digits. And that was really exciting. I especially recommend their quick start tutorial. And in that they go over downloading a data set and then setting up a model and training it and also evaluating it on some test data. And you can read this and probably follow along in 
under an hour, I would say. So it's really quick, like the name says, and I will also link that down below. The fifth and last resource that I want to talk about are Kaggle notebooks. If you don't know the website Kaggle, it's a website where you can find data sets to all sorts of different areas. And you can also often find a specific task that is uh, set around this data set. And then multiple users can attempt this task and upload their code that solves this task. And then these solutions are publicly available and I think you can even vote on them so you can see the most popular solutions and that can be extremely helpful. When I started coding my first neural networks, I looked at a bird classification data set. So there are, in this data set, there are pictures of birds of, I think, I think there are over 200 different birds in this and they are all sorted into folders. So they are already labeled and you know which picture is supposed to be what kind of bird. And then you train a model that tries to learn exactly that and then tells you the name of the bird species when it sees one of the pictures. And that was my first task that looked at a custom data set. And it was then extremely useful to look at the code that other users uploaded in PyTorch, for example, but there are also codes available for TensorFlow that solve this task. And some of them comment and document their code extremely well. So you can see how a real life project of uh, deep learning would look like and see how they write their code and also get like different ideas how you would structure the whole code. So this can be one of the steps that you take to learn how to write your own deep learning code instead of just getting stuck into the documentation and not knowing where to start. This will take you from start to finish through a whole project. So I hope these resources were helpful to you and feel free to recommend any of your own resources that you found helpful in the comments down below so we can all share the knowledge around. If you have any more ideas about what I could cover in future videos or what you want to learn about in the area of deep learning, then also let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching and see you next time. Bye!